In previous videos, I've talked about how I often begin paintings on loose pieces of prime canvas that I simply staple or thumbtack to pieces of plywood. And how in the case of small pieces, I'll glue the finished painting to pre-sized panels and trim off the excess fabric. But with larger pieces, I'll often glue the entire painting to an oversized panel and then trim the entire assemblage with a saw. Here's what that looks like. Here's my loose painting, which happens to be on linen. It's not completely finished, but it's far enough along that I'm fairly confident that it will work out. I'll be mounting it onto the sheet of Baltic birch plywood. The tools I'll be using, this piece of thin, stiff plastic sheeting that is sold as shelf lining. I have my jug of PVA glue. I use this type. A roller for squeezing out air bubbles. This is a heavy duty one that craftsmen use for applying veneers and laminates. But the small plastic or hard rubber ones that are found at art supply stores work also. And I have my trusty craftsman stapler loaded and ready. First, I'm going to mark on the panel the approximate area I'll need to cover with glue. I'll pour out some hefty dollops, and then with a gentle touch, skim coat every part of the back. I want a fairly heavy film everywhere. Any excess glue on the canvas, I can just shuffle off onto the panel. I coat both surfaces because each will suck up some of the glue, and I want to be sure that there are no dry patches before I go to stick these together. After I put the canvas down, I'll have some time to shift it around until I'm satisfied with its position. I especially want the painting to line up parallel with one long side of the panel, because later on this will make trimming much easier. I'll now cover the face of the painting with a sheet of plastic to protect it from the roller. Since the painting isn't finished, this isn't crucial, but it doesn't hurt and it saves cleaning glue off of the roller. I work from the center towards the edges, trying to eliminate any air bubbles. There's no need to press very hard, but it's a good sign if I can see some of the glue squeezing out around the edges. With a sponge and a damp rag, I can clean up any excess glue I see. The nice thing about this kind of glue, though, is that it can be reactivated with water even after it dries, so there's no reason to panic if you miss a spot at this stage. As a bit of insurance, I'm going to staple around the edge of the canvas to keep it from moving around while the glue sets up. Then I'll add a sheet of plastic and stack on some flat weight so that nothing is tempted to lift while it all dries. After several hours, or in this case the next morning, I can uncover the result.
I'll check to see that everything is still glued down, and then I'll go ahead and pull out the staples. I don't want any metal there to get in the way of my saw blades. I'll use my mat board L's to visualize my crop, and I'll mark the approximate location of those corners with squares of tape. Now it would certainly be possible to trim this panel with hand saws, but I have a faster method that almost guarantees a perfectly square panel of the desired dimensions. I could remove the guard from the saw blade, but that would be less safe, and I haven't really had problems with the machines leaving marks on the painting surface. Of course, in my case, the paint is not yet very thick, and the artwork is still unfinished, so I'm not really very concerned. I'll trim the long sides on the table saw, first making conservative cuts, and then coming back and sneaking up on that final width. It's not safe for me to cut the short sides with my table saw set up, so for the other two sides, I'll move to my miter saw. At maximum, this articulating arm saw will cut 12 inches. So for this panel, at 16 inches, I need to shut off the saw, turn the panel, and carefully line up the blade for the remainder of the cut. And as before, I'll make some approximate cuts and then sneak up to my final dimension. Yes, I know that everyone doesn't have this kind of equipment. But if you ask around, I'll bet you have a neighbor or a friend or a relative who does. This sort of operation is really a piece of cake for any amateur woodworker. So here's the result. I'll take this back to my easel and see if I can finish it up. Thanks for watching. I hope you'll consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already, and you might want to go to jamescrandall.com and sign up to receive my email newsletter. I rarely send those out more than once a month, but I'll sometimes offer some great deals on small pieces. See you next time.